so hi everyone a very good evening and welcome to today's live session so let's start today's session as you all know today we are going to be dealing with two topics the first one is equation and followed by number series so now coming to equations okay equations is a very important topic when it comes to bank exam because in many exams we get four to five questions from this section wherein you will have to compare two equations and say uh, value of which variable is greater either x or y correct so that is the most common type of question that comes from equation first let us look at the basics of equations okay mainly there are two types of equations that we need to know okay to attempt such questions one is the linear equation and the other one is the quadratic equation now you guys tell me what is linear equation and what is quadratic equation can you define linear equation and quadratic equation just we are going to skim through for the next five minutes we are going to skim through what are linear equations what are quadratic equations and then we will go about solving the questions come on give me the answer what are linear equations and quadratic equations linear is degree 1 and quadratic is degree 2 correct so equations wherein the variable in the equation the highest power of the variable in the equation is of degree 1 such equations are called as linear equation and equations wherein the highest power of the variables in the equation is 2 such equations are called as quadratic equation so let me share my screen we'll just write down the basics of what is a linear equation what is a quadratic equation and how to find the roots of these equations so let me share my screen so what is a linear equation an equation of the form ax plus b is equal to c is called as a linear equation right see linear equation can be of two types one is where you have only one variable or more than one variable generally in uh, such equation questions from quadrat there is this particular topic you will have only either one variable or two variable questions so see quest uh, equations with one variable are is of the form ax plus b is equal to c and equations with two variables is of the form ax plus by is equal to c here what we can see is that the highest power of the unknown variable is always one not more than one so that is the criteria for linear equation and the constant term that is there with the variable should not be equal to zero so here a is not equal to zero here a and b should not be equal to zero so such equations are called as linear equations so how do we solve these uh, linear equations see either we use substitution method right like if you have two equation 2x plus 3y is equal to zero and one more equation okay i'm not going to write any value ax plus b uh, y is equal to zero if you have two such equations what you do is you try to eliminate one variable correct you try to eliminate one variable and then find the value of each variable you find x and you find y so that is how we generally uh, solve linear equation questions now coming to quadratic equations what are quadratic equations quadratic equations are equations of the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero where a is not equal to zero okay now how do you solve quadratic equation generally there are two methods in which you can solve a quadratic equation the first method is factorization right finding out the factors the next method is the normal method wherein we use a formula so there are two methods in which you can solve quadratic equations so as i said solving linear equations you can eliminate one variable correct you can eliminate one variable and then find the other variables or sometimes you will be able to use substitution correct substitution of one equation on another you will get the answer so these are the generally two ways in which you can solve linear equations coming to quadratic equations you either solve it by factorization or by formula so see all the details of this are available in the video lessons for you so i am not going to get into the details i am just briefing you as to what are the formulas or the methods in which we solve okay now what is the formula that you use to solve uh, quadratic equations if you have to find the roots of a given quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero the roots of this equation is given by the formula minus b plus or minus root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a so the two roots of this particular equation ax squared plus bx plus c will be equal to minus b plus root of b squared minus 4ac by 2a and minus b minus root of b squared minus 4ac by 2a so this is how you generally solve a quadratic equation using formula and this will be the roots of the given equation and generally you can take this is equal to alpha and this is equal to 
beta. I am just taking the first root as alpha and the second root as beta. Now next thing that you should know here is that if you have an equation ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0 and alpha and beta are the roots of the equation then you can write this equation ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. You can write it as if you know the roots. If you know the roots are alpha and beta then you can write this equation as x minus alpha into x minus beta. Okay. Now actually what are roots of an equation? Roots of an equation are values or numbers which when you apply in this equation you get the answer as equal to 0. Okay. So for example, if there is an equation ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0 and 2 is a root of the equation, when you apply x is equal to 2 in this equation, the sum should be equal to 0. So that is what is a root of an equation. So if any equation is there of the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0, you can write it in terms of its roots like this. Okay. Now one more thing that you should know in when it comes to quadratic equation is this. If you have a quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0 okay, and you know the roots of the quadratic equation are alpha and beta. Okay. In that case, I can say that the equation can be written of the form x squared minus sum of the roots into x plus product of the roots is equal to 0. I hope all of you know this, correct? Any equation, a quadratic equation is given, you know the roots are alpha and beta, then the equation can be of this written in this form, x squared minus sum of the roots into x plus product of the roots is equal to 0. For those of you who are not following, who are very new to equations and you are solving equations for the first time, see always refer back to the video lessons, you will get, there will be detailed explanations there. If you still un don't understand, don't worry, when we solve the questions, I will be explaining as and when the question comes. I am just recollecting what we have learnt in this topic. Okay, so let us move on to the question for today's session. See, you should know both the methods, I leave it up to you as to what method to choose for which question. So let us look at the first question for today's session. Very easy question. Here there is only a uh, linear equation. Now generally as you all know questions from equations what they ask is there are two equations numbered uh, 1 and 2 will be given and they will ask you uh, which way. So you have to solve both the equations and find the variables and say which variable is greater or lesser or what is the relationship between the two variables in the given equation. So here let us look at the first question for today's session 2x minus 3y is equal to minus 3.5, 3x minus 2y is equal to minus 6.5. So how do you solve this question? It is a very easy question on linear equations, right? So basically what we can do is we can try and eliminate one variable and then find the value of the other variable. So how do we do that? See when you have two equations like this, now let us say that I am going to eliminate x. Okay, So to eliminate x what do I do? I first multiply this equation by 3 and I multiply this equation by 2. So what do I get? The first equation becomes 6x minus 9y that is equal to minus 3.5 into 3 that is what minus 10.5 correct. Similarly uh, multiplying the second equation by 2 what do I get? 6x minus 4y that is equal to minus 13. Now if you subtract the first equation from the second equation what do you get? The 6x and 6x get cancelled. So I am doing this is 1, this is 2 means I am doing 1 minus 2. When I am doing 1 minus 2 what do I get? 6x minus 6x is 0, minus 9 minus minus 4 that is minus 5y that is equal to again minus 10 minus minus 13 that is nothing but 13 minus 10.5 or that is equal to 2.5 or I can say y is equal to 2 minus 2.5 by 5 or that is equal to minus 0.5. So what is the value of x? Take this value of y, put it in one of the equations and find the value of x. So a lot of you have already got the answer as option c, good. So if y is this, what is x? put the value of y here. So 2x minus 3 into minus 0 0.5 is equal to minus 3.5 or x is equal to minus 
2.5. So if you have got this, what do you clearly know? See, if you take the number line, right? If this is 0, this will be, if this is minus 0 0.5, then where is minus 2.5? It's going to be here somewhere, right? So definitely you can say that minus 0 0.5 is greater than minus 2.5. So that is y is greater than x, correct? So the answer for this question is option C. Yeah, y is greater than x or x is less than y. Okay, so I uh, hope this question was clear. So let's move on to the next question. So this is the next question. Now, in the following, again, same uh, directions are the same. Here, x is equal to root of 3136, y squared is equal to 3136. So what? how do you solve this? But note here that it is given y squared is equal to 3136. That is the only thing that you will have to uh, check here. Yeah. Somebody says y is less than or equal to x. Correct. All of you, please check uh, the question correctly. See, this is exactly the mistake that you can make in this question. Question is very, very easy. Only one small twist there. See, x is equal to root of 3136 means what can I say? I can directly say x is equal to 56. Correct. Root of 3136 is nothing but 56. Now, if y squared is equal to 3136, what does that mean? Y can be plus 56 or minus 56. Isn't it so? Why am I saying this? If it is minus 56 whole square, that is also equal to 3136 because minus into minus is plus. Similarly, if it is 56 squared, that is also equal to 3136. So, y can either be plus 56 or minus 56. x will always be 56. Now, let us assume that x is 56 okay, and y is 56. In that case, what can I say? I can say x is equal to y. Now, if x is 56 and y is minus 56, then what can I say? I can say x is greater than y, correct? So, in general, what can we say? We can say that x is greater than or equal to y. So, that will be your answer. That is option B. So, now I see a lot of option Bs. See, whenever a question comes with a square like this and all, always check and then write the answer. It might take some seconds extra to arrive at the answer but that's still fine it is better than not making a mistake okay now all of you got the answer b hope my explanation was clear let's move on to the next question look at this question so first i'm going to solve this equations using factorization okay and uh, i think factorization will be very easy for all of you you needn't look at the formula at all but always remember the formula also at any point you might require it so how to solve it x squared minus 7x plus 10 is equal to 0. So whenever you have a quadratic equation like this, first look at one thing. What is the constant here before x squared? Okay. Now here the constant before x squared is 1, x squared or 1x squared. So first we will learn how to factorize a given quadratic equation when the coefficient okay, of x squared is 1. So we are going to see uh, how to factorize this when the coefficient of x squared is 1 or the coefficient of the highest term is 1. See, there is another way in which you should do. For example, if the equation was 2x squared minus 7x plus 10 is equal to 0, the way in which I am teaching, no, there will be a slight variation in the way we do it that we will come to when we solve a question of this type. See, when the coefficient of the highest degree term is 1, there is a particular way we use to factorize it. If the coefficient of the highest degree term is is more than one uh, the method slightly varies which we will look into it when the when such a question comes okay so now let us first take this x squared minus 7x plus 10 is equal to 0 so first what you should look at is look at the coefficient of x okay coefficient of x here is minus 7 and coefficient the c is 10 so here i can say this is 7 and this is 10 minus 7 and this is 10. Now, we know that if you know that alpha and beta are the roots of a quadratic equation, then you can write the quadratic equation as x minus alpha into x minus beta. We just discussed this right in the beginning or I can say the quadratic equation is of the form x squared sum of the roots into x plus product of the roots, okay, product of the roots 
is equal to 0. So, this is how you write the quadratic equation. So, when such a question comes x squared minus 7x plus 10 is equal to 0, try to find out two numbers, okay, any two numbers. When you add these two numbers, let us assume that the numbers are alpha and beta itself, okay. When you add these two numbers, your answer should be minus 7 and when you multiply these two numbers, your answer should be 10. So, what will be those numbers? Because those are going to be the roots, right? What does this minus 7 represent? It is nothing but the sum of the roots. And what does 10 represent? It is the product of the roots. So, if the roots of this equation are alpha and beta, then I can say that alpha plus beta is equal to minus 7 and alpha beta is equal to 10. So, if this is the roots, uh, I hope the part where I wrote the equation when all was clear. See, we have minus 5 minus 2 is equal to minus 7 and minus 5 into minus 2 that is equal to 10 or we can say x minus 5 into x minus 2 that is equal to 0 or I can say the roots are 5 and 2 here. Now next one, next equation. Similarly take the next equation. Let us do the next equation. Yeah y squared plus 11y plus 10 is equal to 0. So, here you have to look at two numbers. When you add the two numbers, you should get 11 and when you multiply the two numbers, you should get 10. What will be the two such numbers? 10 and 1, correct? See, 10 into 1 is 10. 10 plus 1 will be 11. So, what can I say? See, the two numbers will be 10 and 1, exa exactly 10 and 1. So, it is going to be x plus 10 into x plus 1 that is equal to 0 or I can say the roots are going to be minus 10 and minus 1. So, those are the roots of the second equation. So, this is y sorry y. So, the value of x is 5 and 2 and the value of y is minus 10 minus 1. See whenever you are given an equation y squared plus 11 y plus 10 is equal to 0. Look uh, see uh, what numbers when you multiply you should get 10 when you add you should get 11 okay so i get i know that 10 into 1 is equal to 10 10 plus 1 is going to be 11 so what i do is i just write it down here x plus 10 correct into x plus 1 so i can say that x is equal to minus 10 and minus 1 these are my roots yeah it's clear now right so now you know these are the roots now compare the roots see whenever you see at for any value of x you take b x b 5 x b 2 uh, whatever is the case, y is always going to be lesser than x or I can say that x is greater than y. Okay, so my option is going to be A. Yeah, let us move on to the next question. Okay, for those of you who did not follow previously, again this question also we will factorize so that it will be clear for you. See, factorization is very easy, not tough at all. Okay, you, you, we just practice, you will find it very, very easy to solve it. So, here let us look at the first one x squared plus 28x plus 192 is equal to 0. So, what will be the roots? See, when I multiply uh, two numbers, my answer should be 192, and when I add them, my answer has to be 28. Okay, so try and uh, try try in your mind what can be the possibilities, right? 20 plus 8 is 28, but again 20 into 8 is not 192. So when you mix and match, what we get is 16 plus 12, correct? Is 28. 16 into 12 is 192. So, if you are not able to do this calculation, see generally we will all know the multiplication table still 20, right? When we if we know the multiplication table still 20 arriving at this factorizing it writing it this way will be very easy okay so these are the two numbers that's going to come so how can i write this i can write this equation as x plus 16 into x plus 12 that is equal to 0 so if i write it like this so what are going to be what are going to be my roots my roots will be minus 16 and minus 12 similarly let us look at the next equation uh, 16 and 48 so, how do we see? We know that 12 fours are 48 and 12 plus 4 is 16. So, how can you write this equation? You can write it as y plus 12 into y plus 4 that is equal to 0 or y is equal to minus 12 minus 4. Okay. So, when you have these two, now compare the values. See what will happen uh, if x is minus 16. Okay. If x is minus 16, then y is greater than x. So, if x is minus 16, I can say that y is greater than x in both the cases. This is minus 16, this is either minus 12 or minus 4. Now, if let us uh, say x is 
minus 12. If x is minus 12, then what will happen? First case, both are equal. x is equal to y or again x, y is greater than x. So here also x is equal to y or y is greater than x. So what is our final answer? It will be y is greater than or equal to x. Which option is that? Option D. Yeah. Okay. Next question. So x squared plus 8x plus 15 is equal to 0. So what are going to be the roots of this equation? See, sum has to be 8 and product has to be 15. So uh, what are the two numbers where sum is 8, product is 15? Very easy. 5 threes are 15. 5 plus 3 is 8. So what are the, how do you write this equation? You can write it as x plus 3 into x plus 5 or I can say that x is equal to minus 3 and minus 5. These are the roots of this first equation. Now let's look at the next equation. Uh, 30 again uh, product is 30 sum is 11. What are the uh, I mean what will be the numbers? 6 and 5. 5 plus 6 is 11. 5 into 6 is 30. So I can write it as x plus 6 into x plus 5 y. y is equal to minus 6 or minus 5. Now, so which is bigger? What is the answer? All of you are giving me the answer as B. Okay, B is correct. So how do you do that? See, if x is equal to minus 5 or x is equal to minus, if x is equal to minus 5 uh, or minus 3 for that matter, okay? And y is equal to minus 6. In this case, x is greater than y. Similarly, if x is equal to minus 5 and y is equal to minus 5, then x is equal to y. Or I can say that x is greater than or equal to y. That is option B. Correct? So let's move on to the next question. See, here we have a coefficient with y squared instead of 1. So first we will factorize this equation. Okay, You have an equation 2y squared minus 9y plus 9 is equal to 0. See generally what I find is uh, students generally find it very easy to do factorization method when it is x squared plus that is when the coefficient is 1. But when the coefficient is some other uh, number let us say 2, 3 or sometimes even root comes. In those cases uh, we feel that let us go to the traditional method. No, this is also very easy. Okay, How do you factorize this? 2y squared minus 9y plus 9 is equal to 0. So what you do is take this coefficient of a and the c and multiply these two. What do you get? 9 twos are 18. Correct? This is minus 9. Now what we have to do is we have to find two numbers whose product is 18 and whose sum is minus 9. So that's what you have to find out. So whenever there is a coefficient for a, take that coefficient, multiply it with the term c, right? The general form of an equation is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0, correct? So whenever there is a coefficient for a, take the coefficient, multiply it with c. So the answer that you get will be the product or that, uh, that should be the product of the two numbers that you are looking at and this minus 9 should be the sum of the two numbers that we are looking at. So what are the two numbers whose product is 18 and their sum is going to be minus 9? See we know 6 3's are 18, correct? So I can say that minus 6 into minus 3 is equal to 18 or again similarly uh, minus 9, right? Six, minus 6 minus 3 that is equal to minus 9. Now what you do is you split the middle term accordingly and write. So you write it as 2y squared minus 6y minus 3y plus 9 that is equal to 0. Now from the first two you take out. Okay, Basically I am trying to write the factors. So you get 2y into y minus 3 minus 3 into y minus 3 that is equal to 0 or I can say the factors are 2y minus 3 into y minus 3 is equal to 0 or y is equal to 3 by 2 and okay so that is how you get the roots when you have the coefficient is uh, greater than 1. Here coefficient is 2 so it is going to be 3 by 2 and 3. I hope it is clear the explanation. So all of you are giving me the answer already. Similarly, here x squared minus 11x plus 24, the sum is 11 minus 11 and the product is 24 means the two numbers are going to be 8 and 3. So you will get x is equal to 8 and 3. Directly you can write, you need not write any of those steps, just you know the sum and the product, right? x is 8 and 3 or here you got y as 3 by 2 and 3. 
correct or we can say that uh, if you compare x and y what do you get you get x greater than or equal to y so i hope this was clear let's move on to the next question now now this is the next question so how do you solve this question 2x squared plus 11x plus 12 is equal to 0. Again, very easy, you know, the sum has to be 11. Uh, the product of the two numbers has to be 24. So what will be the two numbers? Again, we uh, for the, like for the previous question that we did, no? Uh, sum is 11, product is 24. It is going to be 8 and 3. So if it is 8 and 3, directly how do you write? You write it as 2x squared plus 8x plus 3x plus 12 that is equal to 0 or you take common what is common in the first two terms 2x is common right so x plus 4 plus 3 into x plus 4 is equal to 0 or I can say 2x plus 3 into x plus 4 is equal to 0 or x is equal to minus 3 by 2 comma minus 4 so that is the value for x now let us do for y what do you get 5y squared plus 27y plus 10 is equal to 0. So the sum is 27, the product is going to be 50, very easy, 25 into 2, correct. So I just write it as 5y squared plus 25y plus 2y plus 10, that is equal to 0. Or if you take, uh, here if you take 5y out, you get y plus 5 plus 2 into y plus 5 is equal to 0 or 5 y plus 2 into y plus 5 is equal to 0 or I can say y is equal to uh, minus 2 by 5 and minus 5, correct? So now compare uh, both of these, what do you get? See, you get different answers, right? When x is minus 4 and y is uh, minus 2 by 5, then you say that uh, y is greater than x. But when x is minus 4 and y is uh, minus 5, then you say x is greater than y. So we say that the relationship cannot be determined. So they have asked us to mark the option E if x is equal to y or if the relationship cannot be established. So either x is greater than y or x is less than y. Okay. So let us move on to the next question. So how do you solve this question? See for, mo for most of the questions, if you are able to write the factors, it becomes very easier. Now solve this question with the current method that we learnt. 3. Okay, a lot of you are giving me the answer already as 3. Is it correct? No, I think that is not the correct answer. Any other answer? 3. Is it 3? Okay, I will check. Let me check. Um, so here, what is it? The sum of the two numbers is going to be minus 20. The product of the two numbers is going to be minus 189. Okay, so sum is minus 20 and the product is going to be minus 189. So uh, what will be the two numbers? 27 and 7. Okay, so 27 into 7 is 189. 27 minus 7 is 20. So this much we know, right? So what are the numbers? What will be the two numbers? It will be minus 27 and 7. So I am splitting the middle term like that and writing. So what do I get? Uh, I am taking 21a squared plus 7a minus 27a. This is correct. So here I am taking out a 7. When I am taking out a 7, I have 3a plus 1 minus uh, 9 into, okay, you take that minus out. So it will be 3a plus 1. Yeah. Now let us look at the next uh, equation. Uh, product that is 18 into 7 is 126. The sum should be 23. So the two such numbers will be 14 and 9, right? 14 plus 9 is 23. 14 into 9 is going to be 126. So here looking at the symbol, we can write it as it will be uh, minus 14 and minus 9. Then only you will get minus 23 and plus 126. So if it is 14 and 9, how do we write it? We can write it as 7. You are just splitting it and writing minus 14b minus 9b plus 18 that is equal to 0 or I take 7b out here b minus 2 minus 9 into b minus 2 that is equal to 0 or I can say that okay 7b minus 9 b minus 2 that will be the two cases so b is either 9 by 7 or 2. So when you compare these two what do you get see when a is 9 by 7 b is 9 by 7 both are same in all the other cases 9 by 7 here it is 2. Correct? So B is going to be greater than A. Again 1 by 3, 2. B is going to be greater than A. So I can say B is greater than or equal to A or that is option 5 or A is less than or equal to B, option 5. So let us move on to the next question. Next is a question on roots. See generally whenever uh, such question on root comes, uh, try to uh, rearrange, I mean in the sense, uh, 
a lot of times uh, you will be able to find the factors very easily by rearranging itself. So check for that before going into formula. Okay. So how do you solve this question? See if you are uh, using the factorization method, one very thing you can clearly see here is sum is root 7 minus 4 and product is 2 root 28. Now what is root 28? Root 28 is nothing but root of 7 into 4 or it is actually equal to 2 root 7. So if you actually uh, consider this problem like this, okay, root 7 minus 4 into x minus uh, 4, 2 root 7, that is root 28 I am writing it as 2 root 7. So this will become 4 root 7 that is equal to 0. I just rewrote this root 28 like this. So when you see it is very clearly you can see that the uh, like when there are two numbers when you add the two numbers you get the answer as root 7 minus 4. When you multiply the two numbers you get the answer as minus 4 root 7. So what are going to be your two numbers? Your two numbers are going to be root 7 and minus 4 x squared plus root 7x minus 4x minus 4 root 7 that is equal to 0 or if you take out x here what do you get x plus root 7 minus 4 you are taking minus 4 out x plus root 7 that is equal to 0 or I can say x minus 4 into x plus root 7 that is equal to 0 or x is equal to 4 and minus root 7 so that you get for x similarly you try to solve the next question what do you get Next, next equation, what do we get? Uh, root of 3 y squared minus 6 minus 20, uh, root of 21 y minus 6 root 7 is equal to 0 means mi minus 6 root 21. That is going to be the product of the two numbers and their sum. What will their sum be? It is going to be 6 mi minus 6 plus root 21. So what will be the two such numbers where you get the sum as this and the product as this? It is nothing but minus 6 and root 21. Correct. So I am just splitting this and writing. You need not actually split and write directly also you can write. I am just splitting the middle term for your understanding to know how we have arrived at this. So this is nothing but minus uh, root of 3 y squared minus 6 plus root 21 y. Okay. Minus 6 root 7 that is equal to 0. So from this what we do is see root of 21 you know what root of 21 is. Root of 21 is root 7 into root 3. Correct. So in this equation, what I am doing is I am taking a y. Okay, I am taking y out here. So y into root 3 y minus 6 plus here I am taking root 7 outside. Root 3 y minus 6 is equal to 0 or I get root 3 y minus 6 into y minus root 7 that is equal to 0. From this I get the answer. Okay. Previous one also similarly we took. So from this you get the value of y is equal to root 7 and 6 by root 3. So now you have value of x and y. What did we get x as? We got x is equal to 4 and minus root 7 is it? Correct. So now if x is 4 this is minus root 7 or this is uh, 6 by root 3 again x is greater. If this is minus root 7 this is root 7 then x is equal to y and uh, uh, here again x is less. So what can we say? We can say the relationship cannot be determined because x can be y less than y or equal to y. Okay. So let us look at this next question for today's session. Perimeter of a square having its side is equal to the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle having its sides as 8 meters and 6 meters respectively. Perimeter of a rhombus having its diagonals D1 and D2 are 12 meters and 16 meters respectively. So this is a recent type of questions that we see from this section, okay. Even though a uh, lot of equations might be don't involve, but it's again comparing, right. So this type of questions come under the equation section. So okay, let us look at the first statement here. There is a perimeter of a square having its side equal to hypotenuse of a right angle triangle of 8 and 6. So what is here 8 squared plus 6 squared is equal to 10 squared or 100. So root of 100 is 10. So this side is 10. The hypotenuse of this triangle is 10. So what is given? The side of the square is 10. So what is the perimeter of the square? 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 that is equal to 40. 40 is the perimeter of the square. Now let us look at the rhombus. Okay. Now to solve this question you should know the property of the rhombus. Okay. Now the rhomb diagonals of the rhombus bisect each other. So basically so this angle is going to be 90 degree in a rhombus and then uh, the sides of the rhombus are equal. Basically rhombus is like a parallelogram with all the sides equal. Correct. Perimeter of a rhombus again the formula for perimeter is nothing but 4a. 
okay a, again size will be a a a a so perimeter is going to be 4a but here what have they given they have given us the diagonals so the diagonals of a rhombus if you see when the diagonals cross each other right they will divide it into two equal halves this is 90 degree and this length will be equal to this length so that is a property of the rhombus you can look up at that so with this what can we say one diagonal is 12 and one diagonal is 16 means this diagonal is 12 means this length is going to be half of 12 that is this is going to be 6 similarly if this diagonal is going to be 16 then this length is going to be 8 and this is a right angle triangle here so what is this length root of 8 square plus 6 squared or that is again equal to 10 so we get this is 10 if this is equal to 10 then you got the side of the rhombus if one side of the rhombus is 10 what is the perimeter again all sides are equal perimeter is sum of all the sides that is 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 that is 40 correct so both the quantities are equal so if both the quantities are equal you have to select option e so answer is option e now next question of this type quantity 1 quantity 2 see this is basically comparing of two quantities this question also nowadays comes under the equation section so that way we have chosen these questions now how do we solve this 75 x to the power 7 by y squared y cube z squared quantity 2 is 23 y to the power 4 x cube divided by z to the power 5 here x is equal to 1 y is equal to 2 z is equal to 3 so you have to put in those values and find quantity 1 and quantity 2 okay so how do we do it 75 x to the power 7 nothing common to uh, like to simplify and all you have to just put in the values and check that's all okay x is 1 so just put it as 75 here y is 2 2 cube is 8 correct uh, z squared is 9 now I, what I would say is don't solve completely and all you have to just come remember that here you have to only compare so just keep it as such take the next value put it unless you have to simplify it further don't simplify it just keep it as, as such so the next one will be 23 uh, y to the power 4 is 2 to the power 4 correct 16 what is x cube x cube is 1 divided by uh, z to the power 5 uh, what is z to the power 5 wait guys I think here it is 3 okay this is 3 I think it is a typo error so what do you get z is 3 so this is 3 to the power 3 okay so 23 into 16 divided by 3 to the power 3 is you know 27 now by looking at this itself directly you know this answer is going to be a very big answer here it's only going to be one point something so which quantity is going to be higher quantity 2 is going to be higher than quantity 1 so which is your answer your answer will be option b okay now if this question was z to the power uh, 5 here then what would be our denominator our denominator would be like somebody said it might be uh, 3 to the power 5 right in that case the answer will differ but here it's actually 3 okay let's move on to the next question uh, the next topic that we are going to be doing today is number series again from number series there are uh, two types of questions that come okay uh, one is wherein the you have the series is given and you are asked to find the missing number or the next number that comes in the series uh, the next type is wherein a series is given and you have to find the wrong number the first part the first one like finding the missing number is generally easier compared to finding the wrong number because finding the wrong number is more more difficult right sometimes you will if the error is in the first or the second uh, number in the given series that becomes a bit uh, tedious and time consuming so questions for number series the best way to do it is try and spend some time if you are not able to get the logic keep going with the next question because don't spend too much time on one question always keep a time limit when you solve questions from number series if you are able to arrive at the logic very good if you are not able to arrive keep move on to the next question okay Yes, wrong number is difficult. Generally, it is difficult for all of us because some uh, series in the difficult in the sense the difficulty is in the managing the time. You will not be able to identify the wrong number in the given time. So, in that cases, if the question is really difficult, you are not able to find, move on to the next question. Like, let us move on to the questions chosen for today. First, we will do uh, finding the next number in the given series and then we will do a few questions on wrong numbers. See, and let us, uh, another thing that I would suggest to all of you is, 
do lots of questions from number series. You have enough and more questions on number series available in the portal, in the test papers, right? Even if you go to other websites, you have questions. So keep, when you look at a lot of questions, you get to know the patterns. When we are, once we are able to identify the patterns faster, then it becomes easy. So uh, generally, when it comes to number series, we have these trivial series, right? Trivial series are very easy, wherein uh, some even numbers, odd numbers, or prime numbers are given, or cubes, right? One cube, two cube, three cube. Uh, such numbers are given. Those are all called as trivial series. Then you have arithmetic series, then you have geometric series, right? So all these are the different types of series that come. And uh, sometimes there will be alternating series. So uh, go through the video lessons that is there. Uh, they would have explained each and uh, every, every, every type of series that is generally that comes. Here what we will do is we will solve directly the questions and uh, see uh, what pattern is being followed, okay? See, now, now it's up. Let us try solving a few questions. When you solve a few questions, the remaining questions, we will automatically start getting uh, some idea. Other than that, we cannot say any, there is any specific shortcut for number series. So let's look at the first question. 12, 22, 69, 272, 1, 3, 6, 5, 8, 1, 8, 4. Okay, the logic that is followed here is, for those of you who didn't get, 12 into 2 minus 2 is 22, correct? 22 into 3 uh, minus 3 is 69. So into 4 minus 4 into, I mean alternating, right? Plus 3 because 22 into 3 is 66. 66 plus 3 is 69. Similarly, uh, 69 into 4 minus 4 into 5 plus 5. So the next one will be into 6 minus 6. That is 1, 3, 6, 5 into 6 minus 6. That is 8, 1, 8, 4. Okay. Now, next one. Next question is very easy. When you look, it, look at it itself, you know. See, there is 1. There is 27. 27 is what? We immediately comes to our mind is 3 cube. Then you have uh, 64. 64 is 4 to the power 4. Correct? So, it is something related to squares and all that. So, let's see what it is. I'm sorry, 4 cube. So, it is 1 cube is 1, we know that 3 cube is 27, we know 4 cube is 64, okay, 5 cube is 25, 125. So what is the missing number? It is 2 cube, 2 cube is 8. So nothing to explain there. This is a very easy series. Next one. See here, uh, okay, okay, next one, what is the answer? None of these is it. Okay, let's check. See here, 153 minus 104, what is that? That is, I'm just subtracting the series and checking. 153 minus 104, I am getting the answer as 49. When I do 18, see these are the basic things that whenever a number series questions come, we try to find the, if you are not able to do anything, the first thing we will do is try to find the difference between the consecutive numbers, right? 189 minus 153 will give you 36. Similarly, uh, 214 minus 189 will give you 25. What is common between these numbers? Very clear, no? This is 7 squared, this is 6 squared, this is 5 squared. So, what will be the next number? What should be the next number? So when I do, it has to be 230, right? Because the next number, let us take it as x, x minus 214, that should be equal to 16. So what should be the value of x? x should be 230, correct? 230 minus 214 is 16. Then only it will be here, it should be, the difference should be 4 squared, right? So 230 minus 214 is 16. So the number has to be 230, which is not there in the option, that is none of these. Okay, all of you are getting the answer correct. Next question, let us see what it is. 15, 17, very easy one, no? See, such questions come, mark scoring questions for us. This is uh, 15 plus 17 is what? 32, correct, yeah. See, 15 plus 17 is 32. It took me 2-3 seconds to un uh, understand. 17, 17 plus 32 is 49. Similarly, 32 plus 49. So, you are adding adjacent terms to get the next term. So, the last term, similarly, if you follow this pattern, it will be uh, 81 plus 130 that is equal to 211. Yes, that's option B. So, next question. Yeah, all of you got the answer. Correct. See, that question was pretty easy. When you see 17 and 15 and then you see a 32, immediately come, what strikes your mind is 15 plus 17 is 32. If that you are able to find, series becomes very easy. Second question will be very easy for all of you and I'm sure all of you are going to give me the answer for the second question first. No, first one is also actually very easy. This particular, both questions are easy. Uh, 15 plus 2 is 17, 17 plus 4 is 21, 21 plus 8, correct? Is, that is basically what we are doing is 2, 2 twos are 4, 4 twos are 8, 8 twos are plus 16, 
is the next number. So it will be next plus 32. That is 45 plus 32 is 77. 32 into 2 is 64. So 77 plus 64 is 141. Next question. 1, 9, 25, 49, 81, 169. So um, very easy, no? Again, this is what? This is uh, 1 squared, 3 squared, 5 squared, 7 squared, 9 squared. Basically, all the odd numbers squared. So the next one will be 11 squared. 11 squared, 121. Answer option B. Next question. 5, 6, 14, 45, question mark. Okay, let me solve this question. 5, 6, again, this is a series is like this. See, 5, 6, okay. 5 ones are uh, 5 plus 1 is 6, correct? Similarly, 6 twos are 12 plus 2 is 14. Into 1 plus 1, into 2 plus 2, into 3 plus 3, into 4 plus 4 and so on. That's the pattern. So, we have 45, correct? 45 into 4 plus 4, that is equal to 184. Option E. 7, 8, 18, 57, question mark. Again, it's uh, it follows the same series as we did above. Nothing different, same series here. 7 into 1 plus 1, that is equal to 8, correct? 8 into 2 plus 2, that is equal to 18. So, uh, again, 18 into 3 plus 3, that is equal to 57. So, the next one will be 57 into 4 plus 4, that is equal to... Uh, 228 plus 4, correct? That is 232. So, that is not there in the option. No, no. Again, this question, when you see, uh, again, you, it is very uh, easily you can identify 8. 8 is what? 2 cube. 9 is what? 3 squared. Then you have 25. 25 is what? 5 squared. Then you have uh, 2 and 6, which is 6 cube. So, it is some alternating series between squares and cubes. 64, for this question 64, very easy, no? Because uh, this is uh, 1 cube, then they have given, sorry, okay, 1, one. let it be there. This is 2 cube, 3 squared, so this has to be 1 squared, okay? 4 cube, 5 squared, 6 cube, 7 squared. So that's the pattern that is being followed. So the missing one is 4 cube, 4 cube is 64, option B. Next one, 12 5, 4, 5, question mark, 9, okay, 9, 7, 9, which is the correct answer, 7 or 9, 12 by 2 minus 1, yeah, okay, Vipul says 12 by 2 minus 1, okay, okay, a lot of you are giving me 9, 9 is the correct, uh, the one who gave me 7 as the answer, that's wrong, so, see, this is the series, 12 into 0 0.5, that is 12 by 2 minus 1, that is equal to 5, correct? 12 by 2 is 6, 6 minus 1 is 5. Now next, uh, 5 into 1 minus 1 is 4. Similarly, next 4 into 1.5, that is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 1, 1.5 minus 1, that is equal to 5. Similarly, 5 into 2 minus 1, that is equal to 9. So the answer for this question is option D. Okay, now let's move on to the next one. I hope it is clear. Next one we are moving on. Ah, now comes the <laughs> difficult ones. Find the wrong number in the series. So, you guys uh, try it, give me the answer and then I will solve. The first one is uh, 6, 11.5, right? Okay, the wrong one is 41. Okay, okay. so here the uh, pattern is like this. Uh, see, what is the first number? It is uh, 6, right? 6, 11.5, uh, 19, okay. See? 1.5 into 2 plus 3 is 6. Now next if you do 2.5 into 3 plus 4, that is 11.5. 3.5 into 4 plus 5, that is equal to 19. 4.5 into uh, 5, that is in, into 2 plus 3, into 3 plus 4, into 4 plus 5, into 5 plus 6. That is equal to 28.5. So the next number has to be 5.5 into 6 plus 7. That is equal to 40. So the wrong number here is 41. That is option C. Okay, next 8 for the next question. Okay, next question also all of you have solved. So what is it? That this question is fairly easy. See, 1 into 2 is 2, right? 2 3s are 6. 3 4s are 12. So 1 into 2, 2 into 3, 3 into 4. 4 into 5 is 20, 4 5s are 20, 5 6 are 30, 6 7s are 42. So here 
uh, very clearly the wrong number is 6, correct? I mean, the, it has to be 6, it is given as 8. So, answer is option A. Next one. Find the wrong number in the series. Yes, first one was a bit tough. 1, 3, 10, 36, 152, 760, uh, 460. Okay. This question, somebody is giving me the answer as 152. See, some series will have more than one way in which you can approach. At the end of the day, the answer has to be the same. The pattern has to match. That's all. Okay. 1, 3, 10, 36, 152, 760. 41, 36, 152, 760. Okay. See, the logic to, uh, the correct answer for this question is 760. That is the wrong one. Can anybody tell me what the logic is? So, it is nothing but 1 into 1 plus 2 that is equal to 3. Similarly, 3 into 2 plus 4 is equal to 10. And 10 into 3 plus 6 that is equal to 36. 36 into 4 plus 8 is equal to 152. Similarly, 152 into 5 plus 10 that is equal to 770. Here they have written 770 which is the wrong one. Now, correct. Next question. What is the answer for the next question? Find the wrong number in the series. Again, this question, 435 is the wrong one, should be 433. So, the logic that I used was this, uh, 0 squared plus 4, or just 4, okay? Uh, that is 4. Now, the next one will be 1 squared plus 2. Okay, the next was uh, 3 squared plus 0. The next was uh, 6 squared uh, minus 2. Next was 10 squared minus 4. So, I did it this way. Okay. Now, uh, here if you see the 0, 1, 3, how I am getting is uh, 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus, I mean 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. So, this was the uh, logic that I used. Uh, 15 squared minus 6. 21 squared minus 8 and so on. So, here it is plus 5 plus 6. It's actually two steps. It comes in two steps, the logic that I used. So, let's uh, move on to the next question. Hope this is clear. So, the answer for this will be, okay, here it has to be 433. 433 it should be, instead of that it is given uh, 435, so that would be your answer. Actually, it is 21 squared minus 8, which is 441 minus 8. See, such question come, uh, the best option would be to skip it in the exam. But again, a good question that we know, the logic good to know. So, I am solving it. Let us move on to the next question. So, a lot of you have given me the answer. The logic here is this. See, very uh, 6 plus 1 is 7. This question is easy. 6 plus 1 is 7. Uh, 7 plus 2 is 9. 9 plus 4 is 13. So, next one will be 13 plus 8. That is equal. We saw a similar question, no, which did into 2 into like series will be multiplying whatever you are using into 2 into 2. Okay, so the next one will be 21 plus 16 that is equal to 37, 37 plus 32 is equal to 69, 21 will be, it should be 21, here they have given 26, so that is your answer option. Okay, I think with that we have come to an end of the questions that has been chosen for today's session. Okay, so hope the questions was clear guys. Okay, guys. So, all the very best. So, those, for those of you who have, have exam this week, you will do well. Be confident. Yeah. And I will see you in the next session. So, this is bye from Gayatri till then.